Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody, Part 27. Hi, this is Mike Hayes and in today's session we'll be working on a descending chromatic bass line that's been used in hundreds of songs. We'll also be working on a very sophisticated sounding, but very easy to play, 2-5 chord progression for minor keys. And of course we'll be working on our current chord melody project. And in this session we'll be focusing on the B section of Lady Be Good. But before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll be notified just as soon as our latest video is available. You might recall that back in video 25, right at the very end of the video, I played the melody for the B section for Lady Be Good. Let's start this video with the vanilla chords and the melody for the B section of Lady Be Good. Let's have a listen. good idea would be to practice playing the melody over the basic chord changes for the bridge. So here's the rhythm guitar part for the B section of Lady Be Good. OK, now that you're familiar with the basic melody and chord changes for the B section, let's get to work on creating a chord melody arrangement. Now, I'm going to present two versions of the B section, two different sort of sets of chords or two variations, and it's just to give you some ideas uh, as to how I might approach this. Uh, of course, you'll see that I'm mixing and matching different types of harmonisation. And at the end of the day, I'm just looking for certain sounds. And obviously there would be an endless number of ways that you could do this. OK, here we go. Once again, we'll have the sheet music on the screen. And in the guitar diagrams, the note that's coloured in red is the melody note. And this is, of course, something we discussed earlier, that we want to keep the melody note as the top note in the chord. So in the first bar, underneath the D note, I'm going to play a B flat major 7th chord. Onto the second bar, I'm going to play an inversion of the B diminished chord. I'm going to play that under the D note. Onto bar 3, I'm playing an F 6th chord under the first note, the D. And then I'm playing an F 6 9 chord under the C. And now moving on to bars 5 and 6. In fact, we'll look at these two bars together. Uh, as you can see, the melody note for both bars is just a single A note. Now, if we take in consideration what the chords in the vanilla changes that we played earlier, if we take in consideration what the chords would be that are played in the background behind these two bars, we would have a D minor in bar 5 and a G 7th in bar 6. And this is a great opportunity for us to use a descending chromatic bass line behind these notes. In effect, what we're going to be doing is playing the A note, the melody note, as it's written. And we're also going to retain an F note, which would be the next note underneath the A in our D minor chord shape. And what we'll be doing is playing those two notes as a harmony note while the lowest note in the chord will be moving down chromatically. You'll see on the screen there we have a whole series of different chord names. 
So we have a rest on the first beat in bar 5, then we have a D minor chord played under the A note, then the next chord is a D minor with a sharp 7 or a D minor with a major 7th, however you like to think about that. Over to bar 6 and we have a D minor 7 and then a D minor 6. And so I've presented all these chords as some type of D minor. But another way we could think about the chords in bar 6, if we thought about the notes that we're playing in these chord shapes, if we thought about them in relationship to a G7, the D minor 7th could be thought of as a G 9th suspended 4th, and of course the D minor 6th could be thought of as a G 9th. Regardless of how we name these chords, I'm certain you've heard this progression. In fact, it's been used on so many songs that once you become aware of it, you'll spot it straight away. I'll name a couple of tunes now that use this progression. Some examples where these chords move at the rate of four beats to the bar would be My Funny Valentine by Lorenz Hart and Richard Rogers. 1937, Blue Skies by Irving Berlin in 1926, This Masquerade by Leon Russell, 1972, and Feelings by Albert Morris in 1975. An example of a song where these chords move at the rate of two beats per chord would be What Are You Doing the Rest of Your Life by Michel Legrand in 1969. So as you can see, we're going to run into this chord progression again and again. So it's one we want to know how to play and also recognise it when we hear it in a tune. OK, moving on to bar 7 and I'm going to play a G minor 9th under the A note and a C 7th under the G. And now on to bar 8, which is essentially like a pickup bar. It's sending us into the A3 section of the song. And so in this bar, I'm going to play an F major 7th under the A note, a G minor 7th under the B flat, and I'm going to play a B diminished chord under the B. Right then, let's have a listen to how all that sounds. is going to sound a little bit odd just leaving things up in the air uh, as we're playing it at the moment but because we're doing it in sections and we want to really study the tune we're going to have to really pull it apart like this. Okay let's have a look at another way that we could harmonize the B section for Lady Be Good. So in bar one under the D note I'm going to play a B flat six this time onto the second bar and I'm going to play a B diminished under the D note, onto bar 3 and now under the D note I'm going to play what I'm going to call a D 6 9 chord. Uh, you could think of it as an A minor 11th and so on but just at the moment for ease of operation I'm going to name the 6 9 chord with the same name as the melody note. So I'm going to play a D6-9 chord under the D melody note and then I'm going to play a C6-9 chord under the C melody note. Now if you recall in bar 4, the basic chord was an A7. So now we're just going to elaborate a little bit on that. I'm going to change in bar 4, instead of just playing A7th, I'm going to change it into a 2-5. 
So instead of being a 5 chord, meaning A7, moving to a D minor in bar 5, and I'm going to treat this as being D harmonic minor. So therefore the 2 5 will be an E minor 7 flat 5 going to an A 7th. And now I'm going to show you a really neat move. If we play an E minor 7 flat 5, as I've got it on the screen at the moment, if we move that E minor 7 flat 5 shape up a minor third, meaning I'm going to move that chord 3 frets higher in pitch, like this, the chord that we're producing when we do that, when we move that same shape up 3 frets, produces an A7 sharp 5 flat 9 chord. And this creates a lot of tension and gives us a beautiful resolve when we move to the D minor chord. In bars 5 and 6, I'm going to use the same descending chromatic bass line progression. That's the same progression that we used in our earlier version. On to bar 7, and I'm going to play G minor 9th under the A note. And this time under the G note, I'm going to play a G minor triad with a C bass. And now over to bar 8, I'm going to play F major 7th under the A note, a B flat diminished under the B flat note, and a B diminished under the B note. Let's have a listen to how all that sounds. Okay, I might take the tempo up a little bit and just put a little bit more ornamentation in there just to give you an idea of how this B section may come together. Okay, that's it for this session folks. I do hope you've got something new to think about and to practice. Don't forget if you have any questions or comments to pop them in the description section below. We always like to hear from you. And don't forget to check out our resource section. You'll always find something new and interesting there. The links are in the description below this video. And as always, I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.